Alrighty, welcome to 4-on-4 four four Cube Draft. It is myself, Quiniac, Slax, minus apparently, and Strider, battling against the te team of Deastern uh, Focused Alpha Frog, Falcon Eye, and Updraft Elemental, and I, I have opened the card I've always dreamed of opening and rarely do, Telerian Academy. Look, Swords to Plowshares and Entomb are both great cards. I'll be passing Frog, probably Swords, unless he first picked a black card, in which case Entomb. But I'm slamming library. I might even wield this Mist Vault Bridge if it came down to it. Oh, and now there's a wheel and an upheaval and a retrofitter. We're just taking the retrofitter. Retrofitter Academy is so good. And upheaval has a decent chance of coming back. As the cube has gotten faster, most blue decks can't really play upheaval. There's also a Carnage Interpreter. This card's pretty messed up and sick with Academy, but so is Retrofitter, and it's colorless, and it costs one mana. So I'm going to take Retrofitter. I think Wheel, Itali, Mother of Runes, Carnage Interpreter, and Probe are all locks to get taken. So that's five. So I just need two people to want Figure of Destiny, Tar Pit, an Overgrown Tomb, maybe a Virtue over Upheaval. That seems plausible. I don't know how likely, but plausible. Oh, and now there's Sahili and Skull Clamp. It's also an Atroxa and an a Necromancy. Wow. Uh, I'm going to take Skull Clamp. It's great with Retrofitter, great with Academy. Sahili might wheel, but even if Sahili doesn't, I think Haywire might is very likely to do so. So I'm going to take Skull Clamp and pass more reanimate stuff, but that's all right. That's all right. Here we've got Days, Talisman, and Mystical Tutor, and Tundra. These are all reasonable. There's Welder, but let me give you a little... A little preview. I think I think the welder stuff is not still not quite doing it. I read re-added it back to the cube. I tried it with some of the Warhammer cards. Still think it's a little bit below the bar. But I'm probably just gonna take Days. I think Days is great in this kind of deck, especially if I just end up playing tons of islands. And uh, I don't have anything to mystical for yet. Talismans are good, but I don't think better than Days. And Tundra isn't bad either, but. I would rather just not commit, or not even commit, not even try for a second color yet. I'd rather just start with a uh, mono blue. And this pack has Sicarian Infiltrator and Portal. I'm gonna take Sicarian Infiltrator. I like Portal. Here's my main problem with Portal. If you don't get Tinker or Show and Tell, it's a little hard to manage. Like, you can put it in some Academy decks and just cast it, but when you have nine mana, like you can win the game with a lot of methods and Sicarian Infiltrator has been pretty strong. Decent chance that maybe a pick lock comes back if I even want that, but that's fine. I, I don't mind passing it. I could have tried to wheel the, the Sicarian Infiltrator and take the portal, but I feel like I'll be pretty happy regardless of how this turns out if I take the Infiltrator. And here there's Seed of the Synod, Mindstone, Jite. Esper Sentinel is pretty nice. It's also Curse Scroll, but I'm kind of thinking I just take Seed of the Synod, honestly. Though Mindstone's also a pretty nice one. Maybe Mindstone and try to wheel the seat. This is a pretty good pack. Three good white cards, a blue white land, Tamiyo. Yeah, I don't think I want Umazawa's Jite that much. I think I'd rather just take Mindstone. I just don't think Jite is the kind of thing Academy decks should usually be going for. All right, and here, well, here there's a coveted jewel. There we go. That's kind of like a portal. You know, it's not as good as portal, but it is cheaper. Which kind of lines up and works nicely with all the cards I have. So I'll slam a coveted jewel here. Seventh pick. Nice. Over Pyrus Boam, which is also a card I do like, and Mentor, but again, I don't want to take another color of card. And here I would normally look at like Brainstorm or Talisman, but actually we're we're in a the Karn zone. Karn is a, is the kind of card you want in your like mega artifact player in Academy deck. Just minus two make a construct, minus two make a construct. It just puts so much pressure on the opponent. All right, and Mist Vault Bridge Wield. There's a bunch of cards that I don't really care about. I'll take Mist Vault Bridge. I don't know that I'm going to play it. It's a blue-black, indestructible, tapped artifact land. But in an Academy deck, I think it's generally good. And there, part of the reason I've only added the blue-black and blue-red artifact lands so far, as well as the mono-blue one, I guess, uh, is that they're... Oh, sorry. Mono-blue, mono-black, blue-black, and black red, and blue-red is because there's a lot of black artifacts now with the Warhammer set, though maybe Great Furnace should be in too. Ah, didn't wheel. Well, that's all right. Um, here, I'm probably gonna take, I mean, I'm not gonna play any of these cards. I don't think, I think I just take Virtue. Yeah, I guess so. It's like Virtue or Overgrown Tomb. I don't know, they're both cards that I'm not very likely to play. I don't even remember what I was trying to wheel. I just remember what I was trying to wheel something out of this pack. I think it was... 
Uh, I, I don't remember anymore. Maybe a Sahili, but I don't think that that didn't seem very likely to wheel. Oh, no, this is the Sahili pack and it did wheel. Amazing. All right, slamming Sahili. I like Haywire Might, but Sahili with Skull Clamp is just ridiculous. Ooh, Bolsa, Citadel, Scion, and Talisman wheeled. So did Welder. Poor Welder. Uh, I think I'm just going to take Talisman. Bolsa, Citadel is good if you have Tinker and nothing else. Teferi wheeled? All right, well, I don't really want Picklock Prankster. I'll just take Teferi and now. Seed of the Cyanide, I think, is what I want over Curse Scroll. They're both good, for sure. Oh, and Scrap Heap Scrounger's not a zero, but Seed is just such a free little artifact. All right, well, this was an excellent pack one. We first picked Academy, swung for the fences, and it is working. We have six, seven, eight artifacts plus Karn and Sahili. So really just a ton of artifacts. The only non-artifact in my entire deck right now is a daze. So... That, that is an awesome start, and all right, I'll just get to first pick a Mana Leak here. That's fine. You want some amount of cards like that. If I'm lucky, Chromatic Star will come back. Though Thopter Foundry is one to keep an eye on, because with him, Catacomb, Snapcaster, Triumph, Hallowed Fountain, Firebolt, like, there's a pretty good chance that Thopter, Thopter and Star come back, or one of the two at least. All right, here, I have Days and Mana Leak. I could... Take Miscalc, it's a fine card. I could also take Sensei's Divining Top. I think I'm gonna take the top. The reason is Top Sahili is really sick. When you have those two cards, you can just tap top, draw a card on your upkeep, draw the top, cast it, make a token. And then with Skull Clamp, you can just go nuts. Every two mana you spend draws you two cards and it lets you just keep, you know, the top keeps looping. So I'm just gonna take Sensei's Top here. As much as I like Miscalc, you know, it's a fine two mana play. I just picked up a mana leak. I'm not feeling like I'll be missing out too much there. All right, here, um, this is kind of a brick. I could take Celestial Colonnade because I do have a Teferi here of Dominaria here and I have a red-white Talisman. So that would kind of give me a start. That seems fine. I don't really want Bray's Apprentice. I guess I have a red-white Talisman that can help pay for that too, but I think I'd rather just take Colonnade even though I'm not like the most thrilled about it. All right, here we go. Forensic Gadgeteer. Whenever I cast an artifact, I make a clue, and artifacts cost me one less. This would goes infinite with Basalt Monolith, but also just makes a bunch of clues, which is awesome with Academy, and it makes Retrofitter cheaper to use. It can't drop it from one to zero, but it can make it so it's two to untap, one tap to make a servo, which that's a pretty significant cost saving. So I'm going to take that over Narset. I just, I don't think I'm the Narset draw seven deck. And then here, I think I'd rather have Scrapwork Mutt over True Name. I just... I'm just not looking for cards that aren't artifacts, honestly. It's kind of a weak pack for me also, just, but Scrapwork Mutt as a two-mana artifact that I can Skull Clamp, and then maybe I'll be able to unearth with like a Talisman or a Coveted Jewel. Seems okay. Don't want Dreadhorde Arcanist, don't want Blood Fountain. I mean, I could just take True Name. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to take True Name and put it in the sideboard. There's some decks where True Name is going to be good. Oh, Mystic Forge is what I'm looking for here with my Sensei's top. So Mystic Forge over Soul Guide. Zerda also combines if I get Basalt Monolith, but I'd rather just take the Mystic Forge, which I already have the combo for, to Sensei's top. So we're, we're doing great here. The only things that I'm missing is some zeros. So I would love to find, obviously, Moxes, but even like Mox Opal or Mox Diamond or Chrome Mox is a little weaker because you don't have that much to imprint. And then zero mana plays like Bobbles, that sort of thing, just so I can go like Sahili and immediately make a token, for example. And this pack has a red-black talisman of Vendillion Click. has a memory jar. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I'm not exactly the draw seven deck, but memory jar is pretty strong. So if you have a lot of mana, memory jar can go hard. Candelabra of Taunos would be another awesome one to pick up that no one else should really be in the market for. And then here, oh, here I'll actually take a new addition, Aurelia's Vindicator. If I end up splashing white, I can play this as, a, you know, a disguise creature. And then Academy could actually fuel me flipping it up for a lot of mana. So I think I will take that. Oh, Kinnon came back. Wow, neither Chromatic Star nor Thopter Foundry came back. Well, good to know. I guess I will take the Kinnon. If I end up with Basalt in my deck, there's a chance I want to play it. The other card I could take would be Wrath of God, but I don't think I want to take that. Oh, Trinket Mage to get Clamp, Retrofitter, or Top. Yeah, that sounds great. I'll take that over Odawara here. And the main thing I do need now is some stuff that'll speed me up a little bit. And here, I guess I'll take Savannah, because if I play Kinnon and I play a like, white card, Savannah's nice. don't think I needed uh, uh, Blue Red Land. 
And then Uro, or uh, I guess it's got to be Timeless Dragon if I end up wanting to splash white. I don't even know that I'm going to, but I want to have the option. So this pack was a lot worse. It feels like maybe Slacks, probably not Frog, but maybe Slacks or Destern were also in Artifacts. But we'll have to we'll have to see. Pack 3, if Pack 3 is as good as Pack 1, we'll be totally fine here. And, okay, Scrapwork Mutt came back. And I guess I'll take a Brawler... Ooh, last pick, Lotus Field. All right, well, now now I know no one, definitely no one else wants uh, Candelabra of Taunos because the Lotus Field's the other reason. So if I pick up Candelabra, I could also play Lotus Field in my deck. So something to know. I've got a lot of sideboard options. And, oh, Soul Ring and Mana Crypt. Unbelievable. All right, I guess Frog gets one of these two. I'm going to take Soul Ring. I think Soul Ring's better. I'd rather not take a bunch of damage. So, and there's a Lotus Petal. And an Urza's Bobble, which I would really not mind wheeling, but I'll slam Sol Ring, pass a Mana Crypt, and, uh, well, I'll take it. And here, <laughs> there's the Sword for whoever took the Thopter. I'll, I'll take Ballista. This is looking like a very good Ballista deck. Upheaval didn't wheel. That was the card. I remember now. All right, well, I'll take Ballista here and note that a Might Stone and Weak Stone might wheel. Okay, third path Iconoclast I do love, but... Splashing red. I guess I have the talisman. Hmm. Hmm. I guess I will take it because I don't really want to take dress down and silver bluff bridge could come back anyway. All right. I guess that's fine. Really would have loved to pick up like a Misha's workshop. I think at this point Urza's not going to happen, but a workshop could definitely show up and that would be incredible. Mox Opal or Misha's Bobble would be nice too. So Basically just cheap artifacts and mana generation stuff because I've got the, the power. Oh, we get an Urza. <laughs> I did not think that was going to happen. All right. Well, slamming Urza, passing a Chaos Defiler. That card is really nice. But Urza, ooh, we are we are looking good here. This is this is shaping up to be a banger Academy deck. Ooh, this is a nice pickup too. No artifact here, but there's a Cryptic Command. And these decks don't need a lot of interaction, but they want some interaction. So having like a Daze, a Mana Leak, and a Cryptic is kind of like the perfect amount. Passing a Fire Covenant, but we are we are jamming here. And if I could just pick up a couple cheap artifacts to round things out, it'd be perfect. Honestly, I might just not play Third Path, not play Colonnade, and just play Mono Blue. That sounds pretty sick to me. Oh, there we go. There we go. There's the Candelabra. Yes. All right. We're... We're closing in on the final list here, and uh, it's actually funny that we're going to end up with, it looks like no zero mana plays, but you can have a great academy deck without zeros as long as you have enough like other cheap artifacts and Soul Ring plus Top and Candelabra, like all the ones work. Oh, there's a Mox Opal, never mind. No zeros indeed. All right, slamming Mox Opal. All right, whoever else was playing artifacts had to be seated to our right based on how these packs have gone, and now I guess it's... There's no playables in this pack. I'm not complaining. I'm just saying there's nothing I think I'm going to play. So what do I take? I guess maybe I just hate the Inferno Titan because that card would be kind of annoying. Okay, Petal and Bobble both came back. So did Dark Rachel. Oh, Past Frog, I think a really good black deck here. Mm, I think I'd rather take Petal in this deck. I feel like having an extra mana when I need it could be better. And then now... Do I want to take Bitestone and Wheatstone? Hate Sword of the Meek. So the problem is, I'm pretty... I'm doubtful that Frog is playing the Artifact deck. Slacks, it very well could be. So it feels like hating Sword of the Meek is not going to be that good for me. I don't think I want Dig. I'm not going to have enough cards in my graveyard. But this definitely could be a Mightstone and Wheatstone deck. Because right now I'm at 16 lands. So maybe I cut like the Scrapwork Mud and then just kind of good to go here. I don't know. We'll We'll see... What other cards I pick up? I don't. I don't really expect or care whether I wheel much here. So, this seems pretty good to me. All right, and now, now there's a red blue artifact land. I guess third path is really good in this deck, and I guess I would picked up a Mox Opal and a, and I have Lotus Field. Yeah, I'll take the Silver Bluff then. I'll pass. I'll pass Frog through the breach. So I want third path in, and that makes Scrapwork Mud a little bit better too. Lotus Field also, when you've got Candelabra in your deck, I think is generally worth playing. And I could maybe cut the Mist Vault Bridge. I don't know if I need that as an artifact land. And then right now, this is 15 lands, which means I want to cut a card or two. But I don't know. There's not that much I even really want to cut, to be honest. Ooh, Nettlesist? Yeah, I will play Nettlesist in my deck. That one, that one looks pretty good. 
And I guess I'll hate a Terra Sunder. No, I'm actually going to hate a Trumpeting Carnosaur in case Frog is red black. And I guess I'll take a Royal Warden. And, uh, okay, Scrapwork Mutt can probably go. This is 15 lands plus Petal Mox. Oh, there's, I could side in white. This deck could definitely do that. I'm not going to start playing white, but could definitely side it in. All right, let's get to deck building. Maybe I cut one more card, maybe not. All right. Um, I think I'm just going to cut the memory jar. I'll have to go get an Aurelius Vindicator, I guess, uh, for another land. I'll play the Silver Bluff Bridge. I'll play a Mountain. This leaves me with one, two, plus Lotus Field is kind of three. Petal Mox is five. Talisman, six red sources. Plus, I guess, Covey Jewel. <laughs> Um, and this would leave me with 4, 8, 9, 10, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Okay, I can play another mountain. All right. Looks pretty great to me. I have no, no complaints at all. And uh, we even picked up the late Urza, the late Mox Opal, Wield the Pedal. Like, this deck's really popping off. Let's let's get to the... Let, well, let's, let's take a look at what our teammates have drafted. It's going to be less sweet than this, I'm, I'm sure. And uh, let's get to the matches. All right. So Quiniac has a... Kind of like sneak time spiral, some Eldrazi channel mana drain snapcaster deck with a ton of different non-basics. Looks okay, a little inconsistent, of course. Strider's got a very solid red-white deck with Ancient Tomb, Mox Diamond, Simeon Spirit Guide, Gut, Carnage Interpreter, Palace Jailer, Othari. I like this. Looks like a very good deck. And then Jesse started on the Artifacts deck. This He took my Upheaval, Portal, Kappa Cannoneer. Kind of got off that and now is a Flash, World Spine, Gruff Triplets, Atroxa deck with From the Catacombs, Reanimate, uh, Tamiyo, Misdirection, Time Warp, some cool stuff going on here. So I, I like these decks. I am battling against Updraft Elemental. Any Soul Rings? Oh, that's a Soul Ring, all right. I will definitely keep this hand. Turn one Soul Ring, Talisman, Skull Clamp. That's, that's a start. All right, let's hope this doesn't get forced. Nope. Talisman, Skull Clamp. All right, your turn. Uh, and then turn two. If I draw a land, I'll probably just go Nettle Cyst, keep up Mana Leak. Kind of depends also on what Updraft does on turn one. If I draw Academy, <laughs> we are talking then. Um, Mountain, don't blow up Soul Ring. Uh, Mox Diamond, or Mox Emerald rather. Hex Drinker. Okay, that's actually totally great for me. <laughs> I'm not going to... I was going to say, I'm not going to have up... Uh, <laughs> a mana leak here but let's see so right now i have three four five six seven mana i could cast nettle cyst yeah i think what i'm going to do is going to cast nettle cyst and then i'll have and then cast a, a ballista i think that's going to be a, a good a good play here i'm not going to have up mana leak but i don't really care too much and then i'm going to equip skull clamp I think I'll just equip it on the Ballista here and shoot the Hex Drinker and draw two cards. Play a Mox and equip Skull Clamp on the Nettle Cistern. <laughs> is this draw good? I'm just curious. Is this, is this draw good? Updraft's taking their second turn right now and I have access to uh, 9 mana, 10 mana, and I have a 6-4 in play that if it dies I draw two cards. Well... They did start with a Mox, though, so they've got that going for them. Next turn, I'm going to get to cast a Coveted Jewel, and I have Mana Leak up still. Like, <laughs> I got to kill their Hex Drinker and draw two cards with my Walking Ballista. All right, they're fighting the good fight here. Palantir of Orthanc. All right, well, do I want them to draw a card? I think no, and hope I don't get Emrakuld. And then probably let them draw from every turn they're on thereafter. I just don't think uh, saying no here is going to be too much of a risk. And if I get hit by the worst case scenario of Emrakul or something, nope, it's a mountain. So be it. All right, well, this is just going to be a bloodbath here. Coveted Jewel. Candelabra. <laughs> uh, it's Candelabra the Academy. And then go... Oh man, I have so many. I have so much I could do here. Let's just cast a Sakarian Infiltrator with Squad Two, and really just 
like running up the score here completely. And then I'll just attack with this thing and then pass with mana leak and cryptic up. All right, that solid draw. All right, and Updraft takes 11 here. I pass, and now they're on just like, let's see more cards from you. I'm going to let them draw from Palantir. Don't care about that. And I'm going to hope not to cast a, a cryptic command. All right. So going into sideboarding against red green. Mm. I, I don't know that it makes me want the like Aurelia Teferi package. I think we're just going to chill the way we are for the time being. Time for game two. On the draw this time. Maybe I won't draw Academy and Soul Ring right away because that made that game pretty easy. But I think this deck can hang even without them. Though I am going to mulligan this hand. This hand is way too slow. Land go, land go, land trinket mages. Not the way to do it. So we'll be shipping this one. Also, the more busted your deck, generally the more aggressively you can mulligan. And this hand, huh? Mm, I think I will keep this. I'll put Coveted Jewel back. I do need to draw a land because I can't cast or can't play Lotus Field. But any land or zero gets me to a pretty good spot. All right. Mox on the play. Turn one, 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 Kabu. If I had strip mine, it'd be so funny there. <laughs> and there's an island. Let's just go Silver Bluff Go. And then turn two, I can play a Blister for one. I can play Skull Clamp plus Retrofitter. Not sure what uh, the plan is. All right, well, the Territorial Kabu is going to get a little bit bigger here, I suspect. Uh, not that much bigger, honestly. Now it's a 2-2. Two -two. And they get to loot. I mean, turn one territorial Kavu is pretty good. Firing off. What am I hoping to draw here? Gilded Goose is heading to the bin. Okay. And they're probably going to play a 2-drop, or a 3-drop, rather. Yeah, Briarbridge Tracker is pretty big. All right. Let's get an academy, shall we? Or a soul ring. Um, land. Let's just play some artifacts and pass. I just don't think playing a 1 1 ballista does that much for me. So I'd rather just get two things into play. And first of all, if I draw academy, I can go pretty hard. Second, this sets up for me using retrofitter. Maybe I'll draw something that'll generate a little mana, or I can just play Trinket Mage and go get Soul Ring and hope that works out. All right, so Forest makes the Territorial Kavu into a 3-3. I go to 11 here, and I'm getting beaten down pretty hard. Huatli, go get a land. Okay, is it going to be a non-teamer land? Is this Territorial, territorial Kavu going to grow here? Does this thing have like an arm coming out of its mouth? Who knows? Forest. Okay, so it's at the moment not growing. Mm, another island, huh? Let's... 11. Mm, 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 mm. Let's just go Trinket Mage. And I'll probably just chump the Briar Bridge here. And... What am I going to get? Actually, I think I'm going to get Mox Opal. Mox, actually, because this works way better. I can trade for the Briar Bridge and draw two cards. All right. Yeah, that's going to be a much better play. And then who knows what the two cards will draw. If I draw Academy or Urza, I could start coming back here. If Updraft doesn't have a way to kill the Trinket Mage, like if their plan is to flip Whatley here, I mean, I don't think this is going to happen, but if they were to like attack with the two non Whatley creatures, let me trade for Tracker, take three, then they flip Whatley, like I feel like I could win that game. If they attack with everything, I guess I should probably block Whatley. I don't like this. Whatever this is, it's not good. Death greeting ch Greeter's Champion dashed. Okay. Do I die here? I can block. I take 11 no matter what. Because I can block the, the Whatley and then take 4, 8, 11. All right. Yeah, I'm dead. All right. I mean, that was a turn 4 kill. Mox on the play here. Hopefully game 3, that doesn't happen. And let's see. This game, I'm just on the play now. That should be mostly what I'm looking for. All right, let's fire it off. All right, I'm on the play. All right, well, I'm not going to mulligan a hand with Sol Ring. Obviously, this hand needs to draw not lands, but 
I have a lot of draws that like one shot kind of get me into action here. I'm going to go Island. I don't need to play Seat yet. I'm going to go Island, Soul Ring, Mind Stone. I guess I don't want to play the Petal in case I draw Forensic Gadgeteer. And then turn two, I'm going to crack Mind Stone if I don't draw anything. But if I draw Urza, Forensic Gadgeteer, Skull Climp doesn't do it by itself, but obviously like gets me a lot closer. Trinket Mage, Sakarian Infiltrator, Mystic Forge. Like Basically, if you look at the deck, <laughs> any card from this category would actually be gassy. That's 10 cards. And then Third Path, Retrofitter, and Skull Clamp and Top are all good. So anything, almost everything but land <clears throat> is pretty good right here. All right, Updraft Mold to five, which means we're probably not gonna get beaten down quite as severely as last time either. So hopefully that gives us a little time to draw a non-land in the next, I don't know, two, three draws, something like that. Okay, turn one Pilgrim, any Ballistas? Any Ballistas? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a Sahili. So let's go Island, Sahili, play Lotus Petal. And then here's what I'm going to do. I think, let's see. I want to turn something into a Mind Stone and sack it to draw a card. I'm not sure if I want to turn the Servo or the Lotus Petal. I think I'll turn the Servo token into a Mind Stone and then draw a card. All right, pass the turn here and hope... Hope that I get another card to play, because now any spell also lets me draw. It does let the Avacyn's Pilgrim attack the Sahili down to two, but that also means Updraft isn't playing a three drop this turn, which I'm, I'm okay with. Now that I've drawn the Mountain, I guess I wish I sacked Petal. The only reason I wanted to keep Petal was in case I drew third path. But I'm willing to accept that. All right, Sahili down to two, and Mountain into... Mox, okay. What she got? Into Firebolt Sahili. Oof, got punished pretty hard for for doing it the way I did. All right, and what do they have there? Screen Suns for a Hex Drinker, probably. All right, let's go. Let's go. Ballista would be amazing here. Mm -hmm. Mox Opal. Oh, if I drawn that a turn sooner, I could have Sahili'd. All right, draw a card. Oh, Trinket Mage. Great. All right, let's go Trinket Mage. Yes, and what do I get here? This is actually close. I think I'm just... Do I just get Skull Clamp? I feel like... I feel like Skull Clamp actually buys me a lot of time here because I get to Skull Clamp the Trinket Mage and then block the Hex Drinker if it attacks, draw two cards... If I draw Retrofitter, it's amazing. Not, not sacking the Lotus Petal to draw instead of sack, and sacking the Servo definitely cost me, so hopefully we can recover from that. Heck, Strinker can grow here pretty soon, but hopefully... I, I kind of hope Updraft actually just like plays another spell instead. Okay, Huatli, yeah, that's fine. And then I'm still hoping to get a little action here. Okay, I've got a couple turns. If I draw Ballista here, it's just going to go crazy. All right, or Urza. Mm. Well, best I can do is Island. I guess I'll play my Mountain. All right, pass the turn here. <sighs> so now you're going to flip Hex Drinker up to an 8-8, eight, eight, or a 6-6 six, six, rather, 8-8, eight, eight, if, if Updraft has a land. And I just need to draw a spell here. All right. If they don't have a land, they might just use Huatli. Mm. Let's see what this is. Two mana. Hopefully it doesn't blow up Skull Clamp. I could have also gotten Sensei's Divining Top or Retrofitter Foundry. Felt like Skull Clamp was my best bet, but maybe Sensei's Top was better. I don't think Foundry was good, because the problem is Foundry's a little slow without Academy, and the Hex Drinker would eventually just kind of crush that, whereas... Having a Trinket Mage with a Skull Clamp out means I can't really get attacked for a while, at least, at least until Hex Trinker gets bigger. So oh, it looks like we're going to just flip Watley here. Okay. That is acceptable, I guess. Oh, Green Suns for four. Huh. What is this? Undermountain Adventure? Oh. 
I actually don't mind that. I think that was a, maybe a little bit of a misstep because now I can attack with Trinket Mage and they have to block because otherwise I get the Monarch here. All right. Oh, and there's a Sensei's top. Let's actually still cast this first because if I get Monarchy here, Okay, so in response to that, I'm going to look at my top cards. I guess I can tap my own. Poof. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's let this resolve. I'll go get another mountain, sure. Let's look again with Sensei's top, and hopefully we find some action. Okay, that is definitely action. I think I want Sicarian Infiltrator here. I haven't played a land yet. Yeah, third path doesn't do much for me, so let's go. It doesn't matter to order here. Um, do I want to sack pedal to equip the infiltrator? I think so. I'm gonna draw cast a squad two, so cast this for five mana. Draw two. Okay, and go island. And equip skull clamp here. Okay, uh, this is going to be a close game. And now hex drinker can get fully buffed, but I can block everything else. They won't get the initiative until after. So hex drinker attacks can't get put forge on it, which is nice because pro everything. I go to fourteen, then I go to eight, and then I go to two and dead from trap. Which means I need to find Cryptic Command and at some point to win this game, most likely. Assuming the Hex Drinker gets, gets buffed here. But we'll see. I mean, next turn I've got a lot. I'm drawing Third Path Iconoclast, so I can go Iconoclast, Gadgeteer, play top, make, make some tokens. Like, if I draw Academy here or Urza, then I'll have access to a million mana and do be able to do a bunch of stuff. Okay, or pumping Hex Drinker, sure. Yeah, Hex Drinker's good. It's really why I want to draw Ballista earlier. I think I would have been able to win the game pretty easily. Though, had I done things differently with Sahili, I also think I would have been able to win this, so we'll have to see how this plays out. Definitely not over. Next turn, I actually will be able to get the Mon or, or, uh, Initiative back if I really want to also. I can attack with two infiltrators and a trinket mage. I could even equip skull clamp to infiltrator if that's my jam. Are we not leveling up hex drinker? Are we doing something different? I don't think that makes sense, but I guess we'll we'll see. Yeah, I think the best card I could draw is academy now because that would draw me enough cards. What? What is happening? Uh, okay. So 4-4. Four, four. I can't quite kill it, but I guess I'll just block with these. This is a bizarre play. What do you have to play that's so good? Do you want to flip Watley, I guess? I mean, that... Well, I'm actually like much happier about that. Okay. So now, let's... Here at 17. Hmm... I think I'm still just going to scry here. There's Urza, so I don't actually need Karn, I don't think. Though Karn can make a really big construct. Let's see. Yeah, actually Karn's fine. So let's draw Urza. Let's see. Urza first. Then Gadgeteer. And then Third Path. Oh, I guess actually there was where I was supposed to play Seed of the Synod. And then let's go tap the skull clamp, play Sensei's top. And now we're going to, this is going to get just gross. Because now I get to do this. Urza taps this, the, the soldier for mana. Equip skull clamp on the soldier. Draw two cards. Oh, I was supposed to, I'm so stupid. I was supposed to tap the top to draw a card first. Um, I think we're still doing fine, but I just got like so excited that I was going to do this thing. Uh, let's go. Oh, I still wouldn't have been able to play Karn this turn, actually. But let's go tap the clue, equip Skull Clamp on the Trinket Mage, and then pass the turn, and I have Academy next turn. 
All right, as long as I don't die this turn, I think I'm just going to win this game by, like, miles. We'll see. I mean, I guess if Urza dies, that's a little annoying, but I have a Karn, too, so I don't even think that... Or uh, Academy, too, so I don't even think that's necessarily the case. Is this Headline or Scarlet? That could be bad. That would be four... Oh, Questing Beast. I don't care about that. Headline or Scarlet's pretty strong, so... That would have been... 9, 13, 14, 17. It would have almost been enough. No, 6, 10. Oh, that would have been 19 damage with Headliner Scarlet. 3 and a red, 3-3 three, three haste. Your creatures can't block this turn. Okay. Um, I can't block the, the idiot. Let's go Trinket Mage on Questing Beast. Go ahead, no. Construct on Undermountain. This deals... Oh, I guess I can block the Avacyn's Pilgrim. Mm, I mean, I guess at that point, I think I should block here on the Dinosaur, and I take 7, 13. All right. I think that's okay. I go to 7. They get the initiative, but can't, can't go anywhere too bad. Oh, I think I can just win with Walking Ballista. I can probably win with Walking Ballista... Yeah, Walking Ballista Construct here. Put two counters on Questing Beast, I guess. <laughs> you can't put it on the, the Hex Drink, it's really funny. So my plan now is to, assuming that Updraft's last card isn't something great, put enough artifacts into play that the Construct one-shots, and then I get to Walking Ballista the Questing Beast out. Assuming, okay, that we're not getting bolted here. All right, let's draw with top. Okay, draw. And then now this is top. Make two artifacts. It's just auto yield. This is, this is, look, it's, I'm glad I played the game badly to this point. So that we can, we can really go off. <laughs> uh, Mystic Forge. Mm hmm. Uh, I guess retrofitter. I don't even need to play the top. Tap top to draw. And so every time I I do this, I get to make two artifacts. So I'm just making not infinite mana because I'm going to run out of cards in deck, but very close to infinite mana. Like every mana I spend gets me two mana. Oh, at some point I'm going to draw Candelabra too. That's going to be great. I mean, this is this is about as hard as I've ever gone off with uh, Urza, plus my artifact idiots. And then, yeah, I can just Ballista for... I mean, I'm sure I can Ballista for enough to just be lethal that way. I'm not going to play the Coveted Jewel. It actually costs me a bunch of mana. Okay, draw. This is this is sick. <laughs> oh, Nettle Cyst is actually another way to, to get the job done. Because... If I nettle assist and then equip on something, I can then attack for millions. I mean, at this point, I have 25. I mean, we're this is becoming... I think... Are we going to overkill here? Let's see. Draw... At this point, the... Yeah, this has got to be enough. I, I kind of want to just play the Candelabra just to end things. There we go. Okay. And then now... Candelabra, and then these go, and then the. It's nice to have a construct in place so I can see how many artifacts I have. Academy tap, Candelabra the Academy. Ping one, and then cast Walking Ballista for six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. I mean, it could have been even way more if I needed to, but that should do it. And uh, we are one and oh. All right, time for round two. Oh, is this a good hand? Yes, it might be. All right, I'm going to keep this and I'm going to go turn one soul ring retrofitter. And I mean, we'll see what else. Seat of the sign on. All right, soul ring. Hopefully, this doesn't get countered. <laughs> And, oh, it did get countered. Dang. All right, well, this is going to be a little harder. Though Falcon, I did have to 
you know, pitch a echo of eons here. So it was a nice little two for one, but obviously getting my sore encountered hurts. Um, could go for an academy here. No thought sees. It's good too, but my hand's pretty gassy. Going to take retrofitter probably, maybe trinket mage, I guess, but I'll likely run out a turn to walking ballista for one. Yeah, I was assuming retrofitter is getting taken. Mox would be really nice. Oh, actually, Mindstone, let's just do that. Look, it's like half a soul ring. <laughs> and then uh, next turn, I can play Ballista for two, but I'm probably going to Trinket Mage for Skull Clamp again. I mean, turn one, force turn two Thoughtseize is pretty good and disruptive. Do they have the turn three Troll to follow it up with? They'll reanimate here or not? We will find out shortly. I guess I could look at what Falcon Eye was up to. Um, Falcon Eye, besides being on, yeah, blue black, yeah, mostly just Strider just beat Falcon Eye down pretty hard. So grief, fatal push, dark confident, narcissist, more like a blue black control deck, honestly. Oh, coveted jewel is pretty nice. I'll play the seat now. I'll play trinket mage. The coveted jewel kind of makes me want to get. Uh. Oh, well, I'm not getting anything. <laughs> I was going to say, it kind of makes me want to get Mox Opal, but this is fine too. Part of the reason I played Seat of the Synod this turn was uh, if I drew Academy next turn, I could then play Coveted Jewel. Oh, jeez, okay. Don't leave me with Island. All right. I would have I would have preferred to keep Coveted Jewel as my last card, but wow, look at this disruption. Eh, I still feel like, I mean, he's got two cards in hand. Three lands and a Tide Binder. I have one card in hand, but four lands and a Trinket Mage. And the Trinket Mage and Tide Binder kind of trade off. So, as long as he doesn't, like, get a troll out right, right away or something, then I don't feel that bad about this. All right, well, I'm definitely blocking. It does make a future Skull Clamp draw worse, but I'm okay with that. Land. Play Ballista for two. Get while the getting's good. All right. Pass the turn. Oh, oops, I f 6 or pressed too quickly there. All right, well, kill your stuff, kill your stuff. What's your last card? Lazav, oh, that's a sick last card. Action? Mm, no. Draw? I don't even want to play that. All right, well, I mean, this has a, been a sick control game, just... Counter your thing, discard your thing, discard two more, counter your thing, kill your thing. <laughs> All right, so it's probably going to exile the troll here. And boom, smack for six, draw a card. So every turn Lazav can hit for six now, and I can't block it. So I need something pretty fast here. Silver Bluff Bridge, oh. I could play third path this turn. I think I'm going to. It cost me my Candelabra, so I'm not going to get to get a token out of the Candelabra. But I, I at this point, one token's not going to do anything. I need to draw a Skull Clamp or something. So I just want to get the third path down as quickly as possible and hope to draw something good from here. This now gets to exile nothing. I mean... You could exile a different creature. It doesn't really matter. Like Ballista, so I can't reanimate it, I guess. And then this turns into a troll again. I go to eight. And, and snuff out on the Iconoclast. Wow. Just has it all. And didn't even pay the mana for snuff out. All right. I think I'm dead here. I'm not blocking that thing next turn. All right. Well, blue black control. Definitely want true name nemesis. I think I want Teferi. I could take out Iconoclast. I could take out. Well, maybe I'll leave the bridge in. I don't know. Uh, I don't actually think I want to tap land. Because I'll put in Colonnade, Plains, Plains. Take out an island as well. Put in Timeless Dragon. I don't know about Aurelia's Vindicator. Well, Creatures from Graveyards is actually pretty nice. So so if I do this plan, uh, disregard what I'm taking out otherwise, for the time being, I'll end up with... This is enough lands still, I think. I took out three lands for three. Um, no, I took out four lands. But I actually, but the Timeless Dragon kind of counts. 
This is four white sources, five, six white sources, seven white sources, plus Lotus Field. Yeah, that should be enough. I kind of want Memory Jar too, but now I have to cut three cards. I definitely want to cut Might Stone and Weak Stone. I think that card is expensive enough that I can cut it, and he doesn't have tons of creatures I want to kill. Days I might cut too because his cards are all cheap and he's got hand disruption so he can look at my hand. And then maybe I cut Coveted Jewel for Jar. They're both kind of bad against uh, Tishana's Tidebinder, I guess, but I think Jar being a little cheaper is better. All right. Let's try this post board here. I'm on the play. Um, hopefully my soul ring doesn't get uh, <laughs> forced again. If it does, it does. If he dies, he dies. And I actually think I actually think I lead on Opal Academy in case of getting hemmed or something. All right, Opal. I mean, he's going to force of negation my soul room no matter what I do, so I don't think that really matters which order. And now I've got all my cards in play except Nettlesis, so he's got one turn to Thought Seize me. Okay, did not draw, land, nettle cyst, and now I just need to draw action. I kind of hope Falcon Eye has a thought seize or him in hand, because my hand is basically blank. I'm only playing 15 lands, too. Though I have Mox, Sol Ring, Lotus Petal. And mine doesn't really count because it cycles. Same with Timeless Dragon. All right. Dark Confidant. Okay. Any ballistas? That's a ballista. All right. Three, five, six, seven, eight. Walking ballista. I even have the days, so I don't have to play around that. Ballista for four on turn three. Thank you very much. Nug the bob for one. Smash for four. And, I mean, that's probably going to... I wouldn't say just about do it like in terms of like I've just won the game, but now I'm at a significant lead where Falcon Eye is behind even if I don't draw anything, and if I do draw almost anything, then I probably just win. Like, yeah, if he got if he goes like snuff out ballista, fatal push your germ, I could end up in a spot where I'm in a bit of trouble here. But given the circumstances, it looks pretty good. Is this toxic deluge for X equals four? All right. I mean, yeah, that's pretty good. Any, any action now is awesome, but there's obviously a chance I don't draw it. I'm glad I sided in the white, because any of the white cards would be really excellent right now. All right, Mindstone. Tap this for blue. Draw a card. Not land, please. All right, land, go. Let's... Let's hope Falcon Eye draws a bunch of hand disruption. That's all I'm going to say, because he hasn't really had time to play it. Lazav this time doesn't really do much besides draw a card every turn. That is good too. Oh, Sensei's Divining Top. Okay, please don't counter this one. <laughs> this one is a pretty important one. Drown in the lock. Oh. All right. Say go. Mm, losing losing these games is rough. I've I've not been out controlled this much in, in cube that often, like where they just go like, kill your thing, kill your thing, kill your thing. Like Lazav hits me. He's got a clue. Now he's now he's up a bunch of cards. Now. I mean, he had the deluge for the two for one. He countered my top. I drew two lands and he had Lazav to draw two cards or draw an extra card already. The window's closing pretty rapidly for me to draw something. Kite sail larcenist on the nettle cyst, I guess. I have infinite mana, so I mean, if I draw a memory jar here and or Teferi or something, I think I'm gonna pass. It's so rough. So here's the reason I'm passing. If Falcon Eye has so many removal spells, I really want to go Gadgeteer plus Artifact immediately to draw a card. It's worse against him and Thoughtseize, which he has both those cards, but better against Snuff Out and Cut Down and any other removal spell. So I think he's got more removal than Discard, and he might not prioritize Discard because I obviously don't have anything in hand, is what it seems like. But Okay, Cycling Troll. So now the Lazav next turn is going to start getting big. All right, I mean, if this turn I draw something good... 
Oh, unearth dark confidant. Okay, that's not a thought seize. All right, here we go. I could go pretty hard if I drew an artifact this turn. Oh, that was an artifact. That was an artifact. Forensic Gadgeteer. Do I resolve? Yes. Retrofitter. All right, make a clue. Going to kill the Gadgeteer now. I mean, I assume so. If you've got a way to kill it, you'll kill it now. Okay. Let's make a servo for one mana. Tap Academy for seven, sack the clue. Okay, land. Untap Retrofitter for two mana. Uh, create a servo. I mean, Gadgeteer Retrofitter is pretty nice. If Falconite doesn't have a removal spell, like, I'm actually doing great here. And sack a servo, make O oh, oh, one one flyer. Pass the turn. And now I'm at a 14 still. I've got a little bit of time. Clearly doesn't have a removal spell yet. Please reveal hand disruption. Him to Turok. Great. <laughs> That's exactly what I wanted to see, honestly. There's also Falcon is also at six now. It's taken a lot of damage from my ballista plus the nettle cyst hit plus deluge and bob, so. I actually can threaten to, to deal some damage. So I get to untap this for two mana, sack to make a a 4-4, four, four, and then that's kind of where I'm at. All right, Lazav can attack still. Exile the troll. If I had Nettle Cyst still going, that would be nice. I could also sack the Nettle Cyst for mana if I really wanted to, but I don't. I don't really want to do that. Bob is attacking? Okay, well, I'm going to let Bob stay alive here, I think. I'm going to sack the clue to make it into a troll before blocks. I could double block Lazav, but I can just block Lazav next turn, so I'm not that worried about it. Oh, Fatal push the Gadgeteer. All right, spend two to untap it. Okay. And Thopter blocks Bob. And then I'm going to tap Retrofitter to sack the Thopter. All right. To make a 4-4, four, four, I go to 8. I really hope Falcon Eye uses the rest of the turn to him me. That would be ideal. Probably not a higher priority. If Falcon Eye has anything better to do, he's not going to do that. But if you don't, you know... I do have a card in hand. You might want to get it. What if it's a good expensive card, you know? Maybe I didn't have the mana for it last turn. Seems unlikely, but... All right, him. And let's draw any candelabras. <laughs> oh, Teferi. Teferi is nice. Let's, let's see. If I Teferi the Larcenist, I could just win. Let's see. Because then I can equip Nettle Cyst. But I could also attack with both. I think I'd rather just do that. Because if I attack with both, Larcenist either chumps the Construct or blocks the Servo. And Falcon, I could easily have removal here. So let's um, make a 1-1 one, one Flyer. You go into 2 here? No. See, this is why I didn't try to make that other play. Bitter Triumph. Okay. And one card in hand. Let's see. Six mana. <clears throat> I'm going to want to play Teferi. I just what if, I want to untap. I want to untap because I'm going to Teferi and minus on Lazav here. And I'm going to untap the Retrofitter sack. So what I think, if I untap Retrofitter and make a token, then I tap Teferi f this for seven mana. Yeah, I think I actually have enough, right? Because I untap Retrofitter for three, make a token for two. Ignore the planes I'm tapping. Obviously not tapping that way. And then I'll have seven mana off Academy, eight mana Teferi plus untap Retrofitter. So I think this works. 
create a servo. Teferi. And I even have the mocks too, yeah. Put Lazav back. And untap retrofitter. Now I have two blockers. And if I really, really needed to, I could sack the nettle cyst to make an additional blocker. Okay. Mm, Barberto reveals a swamp. Sure. Falcon I has swamp. This is third from the bottom or third from the top. So the top card right now is Lazav. We do know that. I have a blocker for the Larsonist. I have a blocker for the Bob. And I have a Teferi plus. You know what I could have done? And I don't I don't know that this would have been right. Plus one to Fairy and then end step untap academy to use with retrofitter. Wow, retrofitter is so good. If I basically if I can just cast a retrofitter against Falcon Eye, I think I'm gonna win a lot of those games. It's just such a powerful card against a blue black deck with a bunch of discard and one for one removal. Retrofitter Foundry is really difficult for a blue black deck to interact with. Alright, what's Falcon I got? Odawara on Retrofitter Foundry. Hmm. Um, good beats. Okay. Oh man, I'm really worried about my retrofitter getting discarded here. But I can't do anything about that if he's got it. If he's got a removal spell, he kills. So actually, let's go. Just sack a servo, make a flyer. If he's got a removal spell, he can kill one of my he can kill my flying thopter even if I make another one. He basically has to have a discard spell here to really screw me. Because now he attacks Teferi with both, and I just go chump trade. Okay, so he didn't have removal. Land. And oh, flashback echo. Okay. I've got an academy and a tick fairy. Yeah, we're gonna be fine here. <laughs> I love it, Falcon. You just made the, the you just did the most uh, the funniest thing possible. Oh, there's retrofitter back. Guess who's back? Oh, <laughs> back again. Uh, we're gonna make so many tokens here. Sahili into pedal retrofitter. Let's go uh, land. I want to go Karn. One, two, three, four. Make another token. And then now the Academy taps for 10. Uh, let's cast with, hold on. Yeah, tap it, play Talisman. And then Tap the talisman for one. Uh, oh wait, I, I can win right now. Hold on, right, let's 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 just chill for a second here. Oh, if he's got force of negation, no, no, let's not play into force of negation. No reason to. What I, what I could do is I could bounce Larcenist with cryptic, equip Nettle, use Sahili to make Mox Opal into a one one. Oh, wait, I can just use Sahili to. Or to make Mox Opal into a thing anyway. So squad three. So he can still live if he's got snuff out, but I don't think he does. Because now I'm going to make... Uh, oh, wow. Candelabra too. Um, now I'm going to go Sahili. Mox Opal becomes a construct token. And then I attack with the construct for... 16 if he's got snuff out. Okay. Whew. All right. Well, the white cards did seem really good. Like Teferi was great there. If I drew Vindicator or Timeless Dragon, I would have been pretty happy. Colonnade also good in this kind of game. I think I'm okay not having coveted Jewel in. Days. I don't think Elish Norn is what I want. Yeah. Do I want a tapped artifact land? Not really. Do I want Days on the draw? No. I think think we're good here. Let's go to game three here. I've had turn on Sol Ring twice, no complaints there. But you know what? I will take it a third time if, if such a thing is option is offered. Oh, what a hand. Okay. No thought sees, please. Okay, that's not a thought sees. Now no force of negation, please. 
Oh, no force of negation. Let's let's just pass the turn. I would like to try to maximize my friends at Gadgeteer here, and if, if it uh, look, I'm not gonna mana leak any mana. I'm not gonna Lotus Petal mana leak anything, much less a Bob. So let's do this. Uh, Gadgeteer Petal. No snuff out, please. No free spells. Yeah, no free spells. All right, and then Candelabra. And pass the turn here. And got a little bit of a trick here if I need need it. We'll see. Cut down. Ah, oh, that's a shame. Yeah, because what I could do with Gadgeteer in play, you can Candelabra. I think I actually am going to do it anyway. Candelabra those two, and it only costs you one because of the Gadgeteer. Actually, maybe I just mana leak this. Yeah, I'll just do that. If Falcon Knight has another removal spell or counters back, then so be it. But I think I basically force of willed it, sacking Lotus Petal. I think Gadgeteer is going to be really strong for me to have in play. But yeah, Candelabra Gadgeteer is a pretty nice little combo. I'm going to take it. I don't know if this is like a collective brutality thing or something, but I'm just going to take it. I don't care about taking two damage. Uh, land. What am I going to do here? Do I want to play Mystic Forge? I think I kind of want to play Mystic Forge. Um, I'll play my land first. Make another token. If I can land a Mystic Forge, yeah, let's let's exile that. I I think <laughs> into another planes. Uh, let's untap those two lands. Pay one, and then crack a clue here. Because if I hit some zeros, I'll be pretty happy. Oh, there's an Academy. Okay, well that also is very thrilling. So let's just hit for two because I'm not blocking, and then pass Academy safe on top of my deck. And now I've got. Academy plus Candelabra, so I don't really care if Falconite kills Gadgeteer at this point. It's done its job. If he if he kills the if he hymns me for my nettle cyst and my planes, I don't care either. I'm gonna get to go really hard next turn. Okay, no no fallen shinobi. <laughs> Grief. Oh, Shieldred. Um let's draw in response. Okay, Shieldred's annoying, but I actually think we'll still be fine here. Unfortunately, I can't play Seed of the Sign out off the top with uh, <laughs> with Academy. Let's go Trinket Mage. And I think I'm going to just get Walking Ballista at this point in time. Ballista, let's exile my top card. I'd like to hit some, some things. Oh, <laughs> I can actually play that off the top. I can play colorless cards off the top, which is really funny. Um, hmm. I don't have the white to unmorph it right now, but I can go Academy, tap for four, Candelabra, those two, paying one, Nettle Cyst, make a clue, Tap Academy for six. Oh, I'll let the Nettle Cyst resolve. Play this with Disguise. Oh, there's a Mind Stone. Nice. Mind Stone. Oh, and that, that can get rid of Shieldred, too, if I need it to. The Teferi. I just let Falcon. I know in chat this is an Aurelius Vindicator. It's the only card with Disguise in the cube. Just save him from having to <laughs> try to figure it out. And... Basically, the question now is, do I care about him or counters more or removal more? I think I care about, uh, I think I'd rather just play the Ballista and then equip the Forensic Gadget here. It only costs one. Now my Nettle Cyst is bashing, or my Gadget here is bashing here. And basically, I just need him not to have Echo of Eons this turn. I'll be fine if that doesn't happen. 
I mean, this is a pretty good turn four. Like, I went pretty hard from starting with Candelabra and Gadgeteer. Obviously, the, finding the Academy there was nice. If Falcon has a way to get Echo of Eons into the graveyard and then flash it back, like, if he has the Collector Brutality, if he draws Echo, that's a problem. All right. I'm going to kill the Bob just to make it less likely he assembles whatever he needs to kill me here. And... Put you down to five, pass the turn, and kind of cross my fingers. This has been a really good match. I was bummed game two when it looked like Falcon. I was just going to duress and, and Doomblade every single card I played. But then we, I, I had a great comeback game two with Retrofitter, and this has been a, a, a pretty wild game two. So now if I lose, I won't mind. Obviously, I'd prefer to win. But when I just got crushed, I was a little less happy. But here, here, we're, we're getting some stuff going. We've got... I mean, the Nettle Cyst just means that I'm probably going to win next turn, kind of no matter what. And another reason to play Ballista is if I kept Ballista Planes in hand and he hemmed me, I wouldn't be able to play the Teferi or flip the Vindicator, so I really don't want to get hemmed. So at that point, I should play the Ballista. If he kills the Ballista in play, like I, I have a lot of different ways to win. I just don't have, don't have all my eggs in one basket. I, want, I don't want him to be able to take out all my Shieldred answers. Because right now, I mean... How many artifacts do I have in play? I guess I have 10. The Nettle Cyst helps count. So that's 10, 15, 16, minus 1 for Candelabra is 15. Then I tap this for another 10, 11. I have 26 mana without doing anything else. You know. Oh, 27 with the Mind Stone. And uh, obviously every artifact I play makes a clue, like kind of generates the artifacts plus the clues, two artifacts, and Academy taps twice. So every artifact I play generates four mana. So anyone that I play that's cheaper... Uh, does the trick. Oh, is this a Toxic Deluge? Okay. X equals 2. Yeah. I'll nug you down to 4 then. Okay, Shieldred can't attack me now. All that effectively. I guess if you have a way to kill friends at Gadgeteer, if you have like a Fatal Push, then you can attack me with Shieldred down to 2, for 2, down to 10. And then I draw Teferi, I go to 8, but then I go shoot. Teferi is going to tuck the Shieldred here. And I'm going to get some action going. I've liked the thought of Aurelius Vindicator, by the way. Next turn, I could have flipped it up, exiled his cards, plus cards out of my graveyard if I had any. Seems like a kind of neat card. Okay. And, oh, if you don't have a removal for Frenzy Gadgeteer, this game's not going to... Not going to go well. Let's play the Mox Opal. <laughs> Let's not play a giant Sicarian Infiltrator until I've tried to resolve Teferi here. Okay. Tuck the Shieldred. And attack with Forensic Gadgeteer here. And I can play <laughs> Infiltrator for how much? Uh, 11, 12, 13, 14. Fatal push. So he did have the fatal push. Interesting. Okay. Um, yeah, I guess in response, I will still want to do that. Candelabra. Those two. Paying one. 21 mana. I actually don't even want to use the academy here. I'm going to cast with squad three. No, no. Actually, I'm going to cast with squad four. Okay, so that costs 10, but then I'll have all the academy mana up afterwards. So let's cast Sakarin Infiltrator. I just wanted to get my clue token <laughs> and maybe get to sack the uh, clues to draw cards if I need to, though I don't really think I'm going to need to do that. <laughs> okay, no attacks, and then now... <laughs> Let's cast Sensei's top. And now I can just draw. I kind of want to keep the Academy untapped if I can. Oh, yeah. Now I can cast Retrofitter off the top. Oh, and there's the Cryptic. Perfect. That's the only other card I was missing was Cryptic, which is why I didn't want to tap Academy. And <laughs> now I've got... Let's just say I've got my bases covered here. I've got a Cryptic on tap. I've got Retrofitter plus million artifacts orcish bowmasters um okay sure 
That's fine. Yeah, that's fine. I, I just don't think I need to cryptic that. I just have lethal still. End of turn, tap Academy for 19 mana. Make a servo. Yep, and that'll do it. All right, it is time for round three, playing against Alpha Frog, who did end up with both Thopter and Sword, so look at me. Oh, 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 look at this hand. This hand is nice. So he's on blue, black, Thopter, Sword, the one ring, uh, dress down. Ooh, I don't like that. I'm going to make dress me here. I would prefer not to get dressed because I really want this Candelabra to resolve. Oh, does he have Ancestral too? He has Ancestral, Mana Crypt, and Mox Jet. All right, well, I have a turn one Candelabra. And hopefully a turn two uh, is going to take my Mystic Forge. That's fine. I cannot stop that. I thought at this point it was better to get Candelabra out than Skull Clamp. But I've got a million cards that'll that'll let me go off here if I find basically any of the token makers or a trinket mage or a retrofitter, all those things let Skull Clamp pop off because I'm about to have a ton of mana. He actually's kind of got to take Mystic Forge. See to the sign not doing work here. All right, let's go. Let's go action. Mm, not quite, but you know, not not the worst. Academy. Mindstone. Untap Academy. Tap this for four. Yeah, I'll sack the Mindstone to draw here. Okay. Mm -hmm. If I find a red source, then that's decent. Though it's a little awkward that I won't be able to make a token right away. I'll have to see what I can find here. Um, I mean, Retrofitter would be awesome. Let's see if I'm getting my hand disrupted once more. Prismatic ending the candelabra. All right, you know what? That's fair. That's fair. That is going to reduce my mana a little bit, but hopefully I don't draw island. Oh, Lotus Field. Okay. I've got to wait on that because I'm not going to play Lotus Field Sacking Academy, but Lotus Field does let me cast Third Path, so I suppose I should play it. Ancestral into a bunch of disruptions is good. Hopefully Frog doesn't kill me fast, super fast, because I have some good engines here. Okay, what is this? Thopter? Sure. And Sword? What an ideal draw. Okay. Oh. Um, let's cast Urza. And play Lotus Field. Sacking Seed of the Side on an island. And then tap Skull Clamp and equip Urza in case something happens to Urza. And then next turn, if I draw, I think I can, I think I can beat Thopter Sword. It won't be like the easiest thing in the world, but, and if I had Candelabra, I think I would have been able to do it fairly easily. <laughs> Honestly, then it would be the easiest thing in the world. Uh, I think with Urza, Skull Clamp, Third Path, Academy, assuming I don't get overly disrupted here, of course, Obviously, if Frog goes, kill your Urza, kill your third path or whatever, then, you know, all bets are off. But assuming I don't get overly disrupted, him being able to spend one mana to make a 1-1 one -one and gain a life, I will outpace that pretty quickly here. Because it doesn't kill me, like, super, super fast. And Urza, third path, academy, skull clamp, just like, it just zoom, exponential growth. All right, I just need to draw a cheap artifact. Mm. All right. Um, I guess I will spin Urza, leaving a red floating here. All right. A little action. Just, just a little action. Nope. <laughs> All right. I guess I'll play that. I'll play a third path, and then I'll pass the turn here. And hopefully between my draw step and Urza spinning, I don't I don't just miss. Because basically every artifact I hit generates a mana and two cards. And it's easy to see why. Well, two mana if I haven't even tapped Academy yet. So now 
I mean, now I'm gonna take, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, now now I need something next turn, but of course, like a flyer is good, crypt, and cryptic command buys me an entire turn. So let's see if I can find something here. Here's where upheaval would have been nice, but I can, I mean, you saw I, I made 70 mana for a walking ballista last match, like that, it is, that sort of thing is possible, though a little more difficult with the candelabra gone. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'll take take eight here. I'm at seven. So now I need to find cryptic. I need to not hit cryptic off Urza either. Mm. Kill my third path. Yeah, that's gonna make it harder. Probably gonna lose now. <laughs> I mean, I guess I'll play coveted jewel. I don't really think I have. Actually, let's go. Tap tap. Coveted Jewel. Hope to find a Cryptic Command at some point here. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have a good amount of mana. Retrofit or Ballista? Okay. Let's see. What is my play here? I basically want to find Cryptic if I can. So... And I have one, two, I don't really think I'm going to be able to now. Let's cast Retrofitter. Well, I have, a, I have a chance. I can make a token. I can play an island. Oh, I don't, actually, I don't even need to play an island. I can clamp the token. And if I draw Cryptic from this draw, these five draws total, then... I thought I'd have a chance. I mean, Soul Ring, play Ballista for one. Tap the Ballista. The only problem with this is using up the Ballista makes things a lot harder for me. I'm not sure how I can, can win now, even if I do find the Cryptic, which I did not. All right, yeah, I'm a little bit short of doing a bunch of stuff here. All right, down a game. But... Hopefully it doesn't have this uh, the perfect lineup of draws. Do I want... Oh, this... Oh no, this doesn't stop Thopter Sword. Funny, because... The, the token entering the battlefield causes a card in the graveyard to trigger. And it's not a permanent. So that's actually a little bit unfortunate. Do I want Memory Jar? I don't I definitely don't want True Name. Days actually seems like it could be okay. Spells are also cheap also. I think I'm just going to go bigger. I'm going to take out Days for Memory Jar. And I'm going to fire it off here. All right, I'm on the play. Let's see if we can... I knew we had a really good draw last time, but so did Frogerto there. Um, I think I'm going to mulligan this. I can play a turn one Talisman, but I have to use my Lotus Petal. This one's nice. Okay. Keep this. And I think I just put Lotus Field back. Because I don't think this does that does anything for me. Candelabra. Untap my island. Play the Mox and pass. Like Lotus Field plus uh, Candelabra is obviously great, but then I'd have to put one of the artifacts back. I just I just don't need to do that. All right. Any Mystic Forges? No, Mightstone and Weakstone is acceptable though. And then I'll be able to. Uh, Use the, I can use the Candelabra to play a Mana Leak here. Candelabra Mightstone is actually a pretty nice combo. Now if I draw Skull Clamp, I just win. If I draw Retrofitter, I'm in great shape. If I draw Urza, obviously, or Mystic Forge, any of those things. Karn, Karn is nice. So let's go Third Path Iconoclast. <laughs> Do you have a counterspell? I guess I'll actually play my land too and play Karn, make a token, and then I'm just going to minus the Karn here. If it resolves, all right. 
make a construct, which is a 7 7, and then I still have Mana Leak up this whole time. I mean, this was a draw. Soul, Soul Ring is a, is a hell of a drug, as they say. Is that Ancestral Recall? No. Dress Down? All right. It kills my construct, and that's, you know, that's pretty good, but I think, I get, I think I'm winning by enough that I don't need to Mana Leak here. I've got Might Stone and Weak Stone enabling it. I actually wonder if on the draw I could trim a land. <laughs> The problem is, like, you need two to get started, even though I have a lot of other things. Though Soul Ring kind of counts. Lotus Petal doesn't really, and the thing is Mox Opal doesn't either. They're not always lands in your opening hand. Thief of Sanity. That I will mana leak, I think. I don't even get a token. What a, what a beat. I just don't have a way to block it, so next turn it, it would just get to hit me or attack Karn. Either, I don't really like either of those things. Uh, let's just make a token. I think a 7-7 seven, is enough that I should just make a token here, even though it doesn't actually like immediately let me do something. I get to I have to waste all this mana, 8 mana or something like that I'm wasting. But I don't really think... I think plus one in Karn is not strong enough, even if it sets up the minus one next turn, that I should give up putting a 7-7 seven, seven into play. Unmarked Grave. Ooh, is he going to get the sword into the graveyard? That is a kind of cool way to enable the combo. No, nope, it's a Grave Titan. Unmarked Grave Titan, and then put cast the sword, sure. See, now I can start using the Karn plus... Oh, well... Let's start by casting Mystic Forge. <laughs> That's going to make things really easy. All right, Forge. Let's cast Retrofitter. Um, let's plus one Karn to get the Trinket Mage. Because Trinket Mage, if it was a, a land, I would have just tapped Mystic Forge. But plus one guarantees to hit at least one spell. All right, all right. Game three here. Do I want Teferi, Colonnade, any of those things? No. No. You know what? I like where I'm at. I don't think I want to cut a land here. I just don't think that, that doesn't... Especially Lotus Field my deck, too. I don't know. All right. Let's see what Game 3's got for me here. Let's see if we can get the 3-0. Well, I'm not mulling a hand with Academy. I mean, I, that's not. it's not true that I would literally never do that, but obviously I'm not going to here. I have a turn 2 Mystic Forge here. I would have to sack my Lotus Petal, but... Oh, never mind. Skull Clamp... Petal. And then now I can play Academy and cast Mystic Forge without losing that. Oh, he milled the Prismatic Ending, too. Ooh, that's a good card, especially he has a white source already. I wonder if he's looking for a black source or, or what. I don't know, but I like where I'm at here. Revoker? Eh, okay, sure. I can name Skull Clamp. That's fine. It still taps for mana, because I have a Telerian Academy, so... It does make the Coveted Jewel a little bit dicier, obviously, but I'm still pretty happy with where I'm at. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> Soul Ring Academy. Um, no, I don't want to play Coveted Jewel here. Let's just lead with Mystic Forge. Use the Mana Floating, and then Ballista for one, sure. Play Ballista for one. I'll exile my top card. Um, Sensei's top is fine. I don't need to, I don't need to rush into it. I don't need to sack pedal because that's that also cost me mana with academy. Jeez, my deck had this. This was a sick academy deck, and it's had some sick academy draws. So, I've had academy in my opening hand a lot. I mean, Frog is probably just going to concede to the Sensei's top. Is my is my guess here? I think I'll be able to outpower everything he does trivially. I mean, I drew Soul Ring and Academy a lot. That's why I drafted them. I first picked both those cards so I could draw them often. And let's see what you got. Because next turn, how much mana do I have with Academy? Oh, I don't, don't care about that at all. I have one, two, three, four, five, six mana. I mean, it's got to attack with the Revoker, I think. Well, maybe not. All right, draw. Sensei's top. Um... Let's exile the top card with Mystic Forge. Forensic Gadgeteer. Oh, I do like that one. So let's draw. I don't know. And I don't have to tap my Academy yet. 
Oh, I guess I actually am going to have to tap Academy, so I should have tapped it before tapping the top. But <clears throat> Oh, there's the Candelabra. That was the card I was thinking of. <laughs> oh, this is disgusting. This is just truly, truly obscene. Candelabra, untap Academy. I mean, let's see. I think I'll do that now. Oh, wait. I have a Friends of Gadgeteer. I should untap two lands. It's just free real estate. Mm -hmm. uh, draw with top. Top. I haven't tapped Academy yet, but I will soon. Ooh. Nettle Cyst? Yeah, I'll do that. I can actually probably win this turn, or at least come pretty close to it, if not. Um, tap Academy for 13 mana. <laughs> Oh, there's a Sakarian Infiltrator. Well, I'm not even going to use the draw ability. I'm just going to use this to minus five, minus five Revoker. This is going to be a turn three kill. Like, I'm just going to straight win the game this turn. All right. At least I think so. I'm not 100% sure. That's Coveted Jewel. Um, I mean, I guess I can't. I need to find Urza to win the game this turn. Because Nettle Cyst is not quite lethal. I can ping the token. Let's see. We are close, though. It's actually funny. Oh, wait. No, no. This is lethal. Because tap three for three, for three blue. Play Sahili. Sahili. Turn clue token into Nettle Cyst. Equip Nettle Cyst on Ballista. Equip Nettle Cyst on Ballista. Ping the Thopter. <laughs> Attack for 35. <laughs> on turn three, and it could have been even a bunch more. Well, that was a draw. That was a draw. And this is why we draft Talarian Academy. <laughs> Unbelievable. All right, so we ended up tying the draft, but I mean, I had a blast. Look, look at this. First of all, I had Academy and Soul Ring. I mean, these are both just unbelievable cards. And this is just the nut perfect Academy deck. Like it had basically everything I end up looking for in an Academy deck. It had Candelabra, had Retrofitter, had Urza, had Sahili and Gadgeteer and Iconoclast as token makers, had some heavy hitters, Mystic Forge top. I also love having a walking ballista in these decks because it's just so good as a mana sink. That's also good, at, well, cheap. I really love the addition of Friends and Gadgeteer to the cube as well. The Lotus Field never really came into play, but I think when you have Candelabra in your deck, it's kind of worth running. The Artifact Lands were okay. I mean, Seed of the Synod was amazing. It actually was really good multiple games. Silver Bluff Bridge and then the Mist Veil Bridge or Mist Vault Bridge. I don't know. Jury's still out on those. But overall, got to draft the perfect Academy deck. 3 0 Can't really ask for much more, I guess, except for my team winning. But you know what? We take the tie. Well, that'll do it for today. Can't always promise quite as good as this one, at least not Academy-wise, but... You love it when it comes up. As always, I appreciate you hanging out and watching me strive for the perfect Tularian Academy deck. Sometimes get there. And I'll be back tomorrow with another draft. So I hope to see you there. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. It helps out the channel and you won't miss a single draft.